And now for something completely different. Forget everything you've been told by others before. Get ready for the real deal. The full story. Real talk about money, markets, life. Now, it's The Real Investment Show, presented by RIA Advisors. Welcome to Financial Fitness Friday. Your pilots are here. Rich Rosso, Jonathan McCarty. And unlike a Boeing plane, we hope to not lose a wing or a door <laughs> or a tire. Maybe. But sometimes it does feel like the wheels are going to fall off. I feel that sometimes too, Rich. Don't you feel that way? Yeah. Speaking of wheels falling off, they say good things happen in threes. I always think of the Stooges. Three Stooges are my favorite. Um, rate hikes and rate cuts obviously come in threes, right? So we have a Fed. Matter of fact, wouldn't you think Curly would be a great Fed chair? Fed chairman? Hey, Absolutely. I think I'm going to cut rates three times. <laughs> whoa, 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 Certainly. I would rather have Curly in there because how the heck do you come out and say definitively with inflation still where it is and economic growth estimated to go higher that you have found a reason to cut rates? Why I did, you wise guy. Why are they going to look to cut rates? And now the market and speculation, so we see Reddit stock up 48% on the open, right? Yep. Which is a big... CB radio communication board of sorts. Um, I mean, I go on there f for a lot of stuff, but it's a potpourri. It's like next door with a crown, right? It's like the Kate Middleton of social media, right? <laughs> uh, that's what I consider it. So then I got to figure out how the heck you're going to monetize that. I understand there's Reddit premium, but when you have, you know, headlines like, my friend called me trashy for having sex with my husband in my own home. You wonder how a stock like that can go up 48%. So obviously, with the Fed doing what they're doing, risk appetites are absol absolutely back. Absolutely, right? We have yes. futures up this morning nicely. Um, and I want to talk to you something about Jonathan called goal harvesting that I just came up with on the drive-in this morning listening to Merle Haggard. Nothing to do with Merle, but maybe it does. So um, we're seeing that. We're seeing a lot of speculation. Now, what if... Let me throw a what if you. What if... Inflation, which we've seen over the last you know, few months, start to heat up again, and the Fed is backed into a corner, and they can't lower rates three times. Yeah, I think that's going to have a significant impact yeah. on equity markets. I mean, right now we're pricing in those rate cuts, and that's where you've seen a lot of this exuberance going in stock market valuations continuing to go up even in the face of, of what many would argue is not declining inflation. Right. You know, we're seeing overheating in the GDP growth as well. That, that's still on an upward trajectory. So I, it's, uh, it's interesting to see that Jerome Powell came out and still committed to the three rate cuts this year, mm -hmm. given where we're at and, and that we don't really have a crystal ball into what's going to happen in the future and how quickly the market responded to that and accepted that as, as the gospel. And right. immediately we saw, I mean, Wednesday at 2 p.m., you everyone could see it across the board. Almost every stock, almost every market skyrocketed. Exploded. Yeah, exactly. Maybe transparency from the Fed is not all that good. That you know, makes me think that, that how are you so sure? Sticky price uh, CPI out of Atlanta shows a 4.4% year-over-year increase. Yes, it's off of its highs, but this, is, this level of inflation seems very sticky and very tough to break. And not only that, why people are distressed is they don't care about the rate of change of inflation. They care about the bucket of inflation they're dealing with right now. Right. They're caring about the 25% increase in food prices over three years, right? Over the same about for energy prices, right? And insurance, those prices aren't going down. Right, home right? prices. Right, yeah. home, right. right. All of that's not going down. Yeah. So, and you have a strong labor market, allegedly, although I could throw numbers at you all day long. I mean, this is the most bifurcated kind of economy I've really ever seen doing this. So 
as far as upper and lower incomes and where they stand. So the most important part is, and, and obviously this is a government-driven economy. That's what this is. This yeah. is a purely government-driven economy. Uh, when you look at the public versus private sector jobs. So you have to say to yourself, why come out and be so definitive about three rate cuts as opposed to saying, well, we look like there might be a cut in the summer and then we're going to wait and see, data dependency, all this stuff that you think someone who is really trying to be careful with the way unemployment looks. But no, I mean, Bostick out of Atlanta, out of Atlanta does a great job with that. So I don't know where power comes up with these comments when this is going to be a slippery slope on the way down. I understand it was a nuance on the way up, but this way down, right? And we see every, all these different countries doing different things. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like a, they're not in rate. sync, right? Yeah. Which is like the first time I've ever seen interest rate cuts. Like they all call each other. Like Curly <laughs> calls Janet Yellen, Janet Yellen calls Mo, and it's a whole thing. Now that seems like everybody's doing their own, their own thing. So this is going to be interesting. I agree. Yeah, and based off some recent actions from Jerome Powell, mm -hmm. you know, you may be right. Curly may be already on the board, and we're just not aware of it yet. I am. I'm right here. <laughs> why are you on a... I don't know why Janet Yellen and Curly sound the same. It's <laughs> sort of weird. Uh, uh, so this is what I want to talk about when we talk about withdrawal rates, and I heard you and uh, Danny talking about retirement income and withdrawal rates, you know, it's a, that is also a nuance to tell someone that they can withdraw 4% out of their fixed amount out of their variable portfolio absolutely makes zero sense. Right. Right. And when Bengen came up with this rule in the nineties, understood it made sense, but it's not gospel. It's not gospel when assets go up or down and you're expecting this fixed rate and you're just going to go along with blinders on. And before you know it, you're out of money. Right. right? So I have something called goal harvesting. So when we do a plan, we nuance the distribution pattern. We look at, for example, we can look at a retirement income smile, right? Which is how you spend more in the early years and then it levels off and increases as you get older. We also help clients maybe create guardrails. And those guardrails and retirement adjustments, it's almost like if you were working and you had a good year, you give yourself a raise. And the years that maybe you didn't do so good or marginally as good, then you maybe wouldn't get an, a raise, an increase in a raise or a bonus. But when I get times like this, I've been telling clients that have goals two years out, like they need to buy a new car. Uh, let's harvest goals. In other words, this market's done so well. Mm -hmm. Let's take some of that money, cordon it off, take it out, move it to a high yield savings, and know that I've got this goal taken care of. So that's my way of doing guardrails in a way that I'm harvesting certain smaller milestones or millstones, as I call them, that people want to do. I have a client that wants to take a vacation in a couple of years to Disney. That was on their list, right? We have this money now. So if rebalancing sounds painful to you, why don't you just look at goal harvesting and say, got it. And I get to check a box. Let's set it aside. I get to say, yeah. I hit this goal early. Let me put the money aside. When markets are like this, rebalancing and gold harvesting absolutely could work. This is your captain speaking. We'll be right back. Get daily investment news you can use. Delivered at the speed of the internet at realinvestmentadvice.com. The Real Investment Show YouTube page has all of our videos ready for your easy access. From three minutes on markets and money to each day's radio shows like Technically Speaking Tuesday, Financial Fitness Friday, and the latest analysis from Lance Roberts and Michael Leibowitz. Subscribe and bookmark our YouTube channel for The Real Investment Show. Or just click on the show links at realinvestmentadvice.com.
When it comes to wealth management, most people think of stocks and bonds, but it's like enjoying one layer in a seven layer cake. At RIA Advisors, we want to make sure you get your cake and eat it too. Social Security, Medicare, creating a tax friendly retirement paycheck, perhaps you're saving for college. How about life insurance, guaranteed income solutions, all along with comprehensive planning. At RIA, a holistic approach to your money is our priority. Call us today, 855 RIA Plan, or find us online at realinvestmentadvice.com. Realinvestmentadvice.com. The Real Investment Show. Small businesses are discovering that attracting and retaining top talent come down to more than just salary. In today's highly competitive job market, compensation is more than just wages. Hi, I'm Tom Allen, RIA Advisors Retirement Plan Consultant. Healthcare and retirement plans can make the difference in hiring and retaining the best employees. We can show you how to build an affordable, effective employment package that delivers true value for your workers and your business. Call me toll free at 855-RIA plan or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. And now, another page from the Real Investment Advisors Investing Manifesto. Bulls win in bull markets. Bears win in bear markets. Eagles soar above and take advantage of opportunity. Let us help you soar as you reach your financial goals with RIA Advisors. Neither bull nor bear. RIA Advisors, 281-501-1791 or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. You're listening to The Real Investment Show. Next segment, we're going to talk about Medicare Advantage and some of the dangers there. Something to give you a preview. We, um, we generally at RIA do not recommend Medicare Advantage. We look at what we call Medigap. That's much more soup to nuts. And it could be very instrumental if God forbid you come out with a major illness that you don't, that you have Medigap versus Medicare Advantage. But we're talking about these guardrails. So when we put together plans, Jonathan Wright, we look at probabilities of success. We set this initial spending level and say, you're going to be at 95% probability that you will not outlive your money, right? Your Correct. money will be here as long as you do. You know what I, what these probabilities, probabilities of success, I think, Sometimes people look at these wrong. It's like when you got an A, like I have overachievers. <laughs> like if it's not at 100%, they are very troubled. Something's wrong. Yeah. And I'm like, no, 100% is not good. 100% tells me you're not living your life. Okay? <clears throat> you, no plan should be perfect. Life isn't perfect. Things change. You got to shift. You have to shift course on occasion. So if you're, say... 45 years old, you shouldn't be at 100%. Right. That's going to be way off, way wrong. You're not anticipating something. Um, if I'm three to five years from retirement and you're 92% off at a probability of success, even if you're 90%, I wouldn't sweat it. Yeah. Right? Because prob it's probabilities. Things can happen along the way. And if you adjust your spending along the way, so... I have an initial spending, I hit 95% of probability, I give myself, I got an A, I love that. Now, I go through a turbulent time in the market, I'm taking my withdrawal, the probability of success drops to 70%. Okay, well I just hit a guardrail, right? My middle lane is the amount that I need to take. Now I'm hitting a guardrail in the right lane and I've gotta to say to myself, I have to decrease spending to raise the probability of success, which can be modeled. Or maybe I'm not gonna give myself an, an inflation adjusted increase, right? right? So you gotta be flexible. And then what you're seeing today is I'm in the left lane and I'm hitting the guardrail. Now we're seeing plans, I've had plans that were at 92, now at 99. Yeah. And I'm saying, okay, this is great. So I wanna give you an option. I wanna give you an option to goal harvest, where I wanna give you an option to increase your spending. To, is this something you want? Do you, are you do, is this the year you want to give yourself a bonus? So some clients will say, no, I'm good, Rich. Nothing's changed. And okay, all right. Well, you brought it up. That's why you have to manage that retirement income flow from variable assets. You can't just say, set it and forget it at a 4%. Setting up these guardrails and explaining them properly to clients so they understand that you're in a car that's going to move because markets don't stand still. 
there are certain shifts you need to make. We take into account that in our software mm -hmm. um, so people understand. And it's really a lot of times based on real life spending and how what people would do. This is like if people got a raise at their job or they, they didn't get a raise or they're getting a cut right. in their pay, right? You adjust. Yeah, I think, you, I think you hit it on the head, Rich. It's about flexibility, you know, and right. I've got clients in the same situation where they've got a 92% probability and they're like, well, how can we increase that a little bit? And, you know, that's where you have to stop and have that conversation of we, we are already taking very conservative assumptions in our financial modeling. So if you're at 92% in one of our financial plans, you are in a very good position, you know, so it's, it's about taking a look at what the inputs are, what our assumptions are for projecting those expenses into the future, your investment returns into the future, and then being flexible and making adjustments to that plan in line with what you expect to see as far as changes in expenses for you individually. Yep. And if you have goals that you've outlined that you want to set funds aside for, you know, I, I love your approach about, you know, harvesting those to, to set those aside to cover goals for the future. I tell clients this regularly, if you have something that you're planning for in the next one to three years, then these are not funds you want to have invested in the market. You know, there's a lot that could happen in any given year. And if you, you're right. I've already met that goal, why take the additional risk of seeing, well, let, let, you know, that's, that's the gambler's addiction, well, right? No, Let's let right. it ride a little bit longer. Maybe I can get more money. Right. And so you accelerate this goal harvesting and say, um, I, or I have clients that are going to buy a car in five years or seven years. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I understand this is, we got five or seven years, but you already hit this goal. If I take this money out and put it aside in an interest bearing account, at least I know from the volatility perspective, we can check this goal off. Yep. Right. So I had one client that he was going to do that. And he said, you know, you, the car is really ragged now. I might go out and buy a car now. I said, well, okay, we'll just take the goal off now. So I have some clients that are accelerating the goals based on what the market's done, thinking that eventually we're not going to have this kind of, you know, this kind of euphoria. Right. Right. So the most important part is plans are designed to be flexible. You're special and you also have to be flexible if you have, unless you have guaranteed income, unless if you, most of your expenses are covered by some form of guaranteed income, then, then this is, this is icing on cake. Right. The variable assets like fun stuff. So maybe some year I decide that I'm not going to withdraw. I have a bad year, I'm not. So I have clients that have a lot of guaranteed income covers probably 80 to 85% of their expenses. Their withdrawal rates are low. This year, I'm, I say to them, listen, you, you wanted to take this trip. You wanted to take it in four years. Do you think about taking it now? You're younger, you're more spry, you want to go to Italy, whatever you want to do. This is the time. Yeah. You know, to take those funds aside. So I actually have clients sort of like reshuffling goals based on the market. So it's not only guardrail shift, it's goal shuffling. Right. Um, based on how markets are acting. Because sooner or later, we know when the water is like glass and the sun's out and everything's calm, storm is coming. Exactly. That's how I look at markets <laughs> all the time. I'll enjoy the weather I have. But I don't extrapolate this weather out forever. Right. I don't, the one thing I don't suffer from is recency bias. So I don't look at, say, oh, well, the next 100 miles is going to be great. No, I look at it as very well something can brew up. Yeah. And that's how you have to look at things and not be so enamored and stuck in, you know, the dopamine that's going on when you see Reddit up 48%. By the way, a Reddit that has, my friend called me trashy for having sex with my husband in my own home. Monetize that. <laughs> it's like monetizing the, the, what's that guy's name? They used to do, you're not the father. Maury. Maury. It's, yeah. like, it's like monetizing the Maury show. Yep. Reddit. <laughs> yeah, there's, some, there's some outlandish things on that, on that website. You know, I th think that... Uh, Anytime your business model is based around the volunteer work of people who are running these different subreddits, you know, moderators are not paid employees. These are all individuals who are volunteers. There's really nothing to stop all of these people from shifting to a new website that could be the new Reddit. Here's an uplifting post. My IQ is 76 and I'm stupid. This is a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Always bottom of my class. Used to fail everything until I dropped out. Couldn't understand anything. My stepdad took me to the doctors and said, my IQ is very low. Yet the guy can spell and has grammar more than I know people that are scholars. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, but this is like, 
I'm not, I mean, there's no recommendation to buy a stock on the show. I wouldn't touch this thing. So what's the lesson? Here's one more thing is a lesson of when IPOs break, <clears throat> the last thing I want to do is buy that stock. Especially chasing it. Yeah. Chasing. Yeah. Chasing the IPO is a dangerous strategy. Absolutely. Right. There's always a, a tremendous amount of excitement and potential momentum coming out of the gate for a lot of IPOs. You can't let that burn off. Right. Well, look it at what happened months. with Robinhood a couple of years ago. When they IPO'd, they shot up and then they tanked, you know, eighty percent of their value. So people don't realize how many of these stocks fail. Right. Like rent a runway. Yeah, well, when also, I mean, Robinhood has a legitimate business model. Exactly. I mean, they operate a trading platform. Right. So they have revenues that they're generating through <laughs> users. You know, Reddit's, uh, Reddit's business model is advertising. Yeah. That, that, that's it. I mean, it's, it's advertising. There's really not much else you can do other than data mining the website for demographic information. But even that is skewed by the amount of fake accounts. Absolutely. And just because something sounds good in theory doesn't mean it's going to be a good stock. Right. Look at Allbirds, right? The shoe store, the company. Rent the Runway, which my girlfriend uses because she's on TV and she's a reporter. She uses that and she thinks that's a good business model. You know what that stock trades at today? What's that? 37 cents. Wow. Whew. Let the euphoria burn away from this Reddit thing. Yeah. Don't be the IQ guy of 76. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a good year. Uh <laughs> It was very independent that year. So um, I think that um, you have to, when the markets are doing what they're doing, regardless of what you own, NVIDIA and so forth, like for us, we put, I call the corrals around these stocks, we, on these positions, right? And when the corral, when the, well, the wild things within the corral start to bang on the fence, we've got to push them back, Yeah. right? We do that. That doesn't mean we're getting rid of the wild things. We like them. We like wild things around here. Yes, we do. <laughs> so we want to make sure that we push them back, right? Yep. And if, if we push them back too much and we say we need more wild things, we might add to the corral. So every stock has this, this corral or fence around it that we monitor, for engagement and we will trim and so forth. So you don't have to get rid of something that you think is going out of its mind, like an NVIDIA or so forth, because it, the narrative is strong. But you can certainly take profits, trim, goal harvest, mm -hmm. and do these things. I think it's really important for you to manage the portfolio as just as important to manage it on the upside than on the, as on the downside. If not even more so. I don't think there's any yeah. difference. Yeah. Right. And if you benchmark to a higher portfolio level, which a lot of people do, like they lock it in, they have that anchor and they don't want it to go backwards. Well, if you take some money off the table, you'll feel good about it. That's right. So, all right, we get back. We're going to talk about Medicare Advantage, understanding the risks. And there are several wholesale risks we would like to make you aware of when we get back. Stay tuned. Investment Advice Blog. It's required reading for the informed investor. Catch it today at realinvestmentadvice.com. Oh, Red, I declare. I plum missed that candy coffee. Whatever am I gonna do? Don't you worry, little darling. We'll watch it again on our YouTube channel. Why, Red? I never! The Real Investment Show YouTube channel has all of our past presentations from Candid Coffee and Lunch and Learn to special topic discussions and all of our live show recordings preserved for you. Subscribe now to the Real Investment Show YouTube channel or look for the link on our website at realinvestmentadvice.com. Hi, Lance Roberts here. If you're like most people, your 401k plan represents the bulk of your retirement assets. And unfortunately for many, managing your 401k plan can be difficult. 
There's so many choices, so many things to consider. With just a quick email, a couple of questions, you can put RIA Advisors to work for you managing your 401k plan. Just simply click Ask a Question at realinvestmentadvice.com or give us a call at 855-RIA-PLAN. That's realinvestmentadvice.com. The Real Investment Show. And now, another page from the Real Investment Advisors Investing Manifesto. Manage risk and volatility rather than trying to manage gains. You don't have to be right all the time. Long-term investing success is a 70% gain. Let us help you reach your financial goals with RIA Advisors. Neither bull nor bear. RIA Advisors. 281-501-1791 or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. Can't catch the whole show now? Listen to our podcast later at realinvestmentadvice.com. Food in total is now making up 30% of the average discretionary income. I believe it. I mean, that yeah. is our largest expenses food. Yeah. And, and we rarely eat out. The Real Investment Show podcast. Our biggest frustration at home is how do we do this cheaper? Yeah. Uh, no, I agree. Better. I agree. We're, we're running Hunger Games at our house. At realinvestmentadvice.com. <laughs> so, you know, if you can make it to the table without getting killed, you get to eat. When it comes to wealth management, most people think of stocks and bonds, but it's like enjoying one layer in a seven-layer cake. At RIA Advisors, we want to make sure you get your cake and eat it too. Social Security, Medicare, creating a tax-friendly retirement paycheck, perhaps you're saving for college. How about life insurance, guaranteed income solutions, all along with comprehensive planning. At RIA, a holistic approach to your money is our priority. Call us today, 855-RIA-PLAN, or find us online at realinvestmentadvice.com, realinvestmentadvice.com. Health and financial security touches everyone within your organization. Offering benefits for all doesn't need to be complicated. Hi, I'm Tom Allen, Senior Benefits Consultant at RIA Advisors. RIA Benefits provides independent expertise to find solutions that speak to the mission of your business, the culture you want to establish, and the budget you are able to work within. Book a free consultation with me at realinvestmentadvice.com slash retirement, and we'll find a solution that takes care of your most important asset, your people. realinvestmentadvice.com slash retirement, realinvestmentadvice.com. The Real Investment Show YouTube channel has all our videos ready for your easy access. Like Technically Speaking Tuesday, Financial Fitness Friday, plus each day's radio shows. Subscribe and bookmark our YouTube channel at realinvestmentadvice.com. You're listening to The Real Investment Show. I am stuck in the Reddit rabbit hole. <laughs> My friend had an orgy, and for some reason, it's making me extremely angry. This is this is up forty eight percent. Maybe she wasn't invited. <laughs> I, you know, again, I get this is I get this is how we communicate, but I never understood even how next door monetized anything. Yeah. You know, uh, one of the things we do for the show is try to increase our search engine optimization. I heard that. Keywords, you know, Keywords. things that people are looking for. What are they looking for? Well, that's the point. Because <laughs> when you go on Google Trends uh, to look at what people are searching for. Oh, man. Oh, my I don't goodness. even want to know. <laughs> yeah. Like, they're all on Reddit, though. I'm going to tell you that. It's like the dumbing down of society. There are, certain yeah. con there are certain Reddit commentary here that I can't even... No. Say on the radio. No. This is a family show. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even I'm shocked. <laughs> so that takes a lot. <laughs> let me tell you. Woo. So, um, <laughs> what are we talking about? Oh, Medicare Advantage. So, <laughs> so stuck on these Reddit boards. Sorry. Get your head back in the game, Rosho. Three rate cuts. All right. Medicare Advantage, now again, some of my idols promote Medicare Advantage. Joe Namath, Jimmy J.J. Walker, William Shatner, they're all pushing this, right? There's nothing, I'm going to say there's nothing inherently wrong with Medicare Advantage, but you have to be careful when you are looking at first enrolling in Medicare. You could regret having Medicare Advantage down the road, Yeah. right? If I'm a young retiree, then Medicare Advantage might sound attractive to me. Say I don't go to the doctor very often. I'm relatively healthy. 
This is relatively inexpensive, although it's very profitable for insurance companies. Um, even though these Medicare Advantage plans, you've got to be careful, they can change their policies from year to year, and you get a statement of that. So you might be investigating plans overall, but what a Medicare Advantage is, it's soup to nuts, covers everything. And I even might get an iPad, and I might get silver sneakers, gym memberships, I might get all this stuff and have no deductible. I don't mind. So for people that are cash strapped in retirement, without having to buy Medicare part, uh, you know, get the prescription drug coverage, go out and get vision, right? Get Medigap, which can be expensive. I can get this all in one package. But, and, and I understand why people do it. Like I do have some clients that have to do it because they're cash flow restricted. Mm -hmm. They, they have no other choice. Although I would scrounge and do whatever I can not to in case I've gotten an illness. They don't travel very much. They don't leave the country. They barely leave the county. So I, I feel that for them, it's the right choice, right? Um, but you have to understand from this perspective of what Medicare Advantage doesn't do. So you have a guaranteed period of time, whether you have left a job and had employer health insurance and you need to sign up for Medicare or you're 65 and you just need to sign up, you have a grace period to get your Medigap. So when you get Medicare Part A and B, I call that Swiss cheese. A lot of holes. Lots of holes you yep. have to fill in. Like, you know, the government says that teeth and eyes don't matter, right? So you might want dental coverage. I have some clients where they go, you know what? The vision coverage isn't that great. I may not do that. Although there are a lot of private entities now coming up with different programs that seem fairly attractive or at least worth an investigation. Like prescription drug savings plans, sometimes rival Part D. And I've researched them going, what's the catch? Yeah. So there are some things that the private sector is doing that makes it easier to get certain coverage to make Medicare Advantage look even better. But when people make decisions based on premiums and no deductibles, when they know they can afford Medigap, that's a problem. But you got to remember, your health worsens with age. And if I have an issue, so Medicare Advantage is like, we talked about this corral around our investments. You have a very tight knit group of companies. You know, there are hospitals that do it and so forth. If I want to go out of that network, and I had a client that did this where she had cancer, she has Medicare Advantage, she has cancer, and she wanted to do a treatment that wasn't recommended by Medicare Advantage. It seemed more effective, which means that they're like, no, we don't do that. Now, she could appeal, but there's a lot of stress into that process to do that. So she tells me to this day, that was the worst decision I should have listened to you. Because here's the thing, if I'm on Medicare Advantage and I'm outside my enrollment period, I say I'm 65, I enroll in Medicare Advantage, I love Jimmy J.J. Walker, Joe Namath can't steer me the wrong way. I mean, look at him, he's Broadway Joe. What is he going to do? He's not going <laughs> to tell me anything that I don't want. You know, hey, Joe's doing it. Joe can pay a lot of stuff out of pocket, you can't. Now I have a pre-existing condition. I want to get out of Medicare Advantage because I like this treatment over at this place but I have to go to Medigap. Guess what? Can't. You can't. Yeah. You're outside the window. Pre-existing condition clauses exist, generally speaking, with Medigap. Now, I will tell you, there are certain states that will tug and pull at some of these rules. So you've got to look at most, I mean, these are general rules that are in most states, but some states might say no, we're going to remove this pre-existing condition clause. So there's going to be something that maybe certain states are going to do. But for the most part, this is how it's going to work. So if you think you can get better care out of your plan network and you drop Medicare Advantage because you have an enrollment period and you go back to original Medicare, if you would just go to Part B, that only covers 80% of your medical treatment. And then you have Part A has high deductibles to cover your hospital. You would need Medigap to fill those holes. And if you don't have it, then you're going to have a problem. And you're not going to be able to get Medigap. 
Not without an evaluation. Yeah. Right? So um, now you could find another Medicare Advantage plan whose network might, whose network might include your doctors. So if you're going to go to Medicare Advantage, keep in mind, again, there are cer- certain state laws that will take everyone regardless of health status. Someone brought one up on the chat. New York, Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts. Most states, though, say you have to have the pre-existing condition clause. You can't change, right? So that's why we're hitting, the, we're looking broader than some of these specific states. So I had one client, again, she did find a Medicare Advantage plan to switch to that had at least better coverage for what she wanted. It still wasn't perfect, but she was stuck. Mm-hmm. So why would I do this? Why would I even look to Medicare Advantage? Jonathan, so when you think about this, I think sometimes you have to say to yourself, it's practical for this individual based on their funds. Yeah. You know, it's. I think you hit the, the nail on the head there, Rich. You know, for individuals who are looking to kind of minimize their costs associated with Medicare and retirement, your Medicare Advantage is a good option. But, you know, what I tell clients is Medicare Advantage is like the HMO of, of Medicare. You're going to have lower premiums, but you must stay in network to be able to take advantage of, of those mm-hmm. lower costs. And so if you find a physician or a treatment that's out of network, you might be in a difficult situation. So you want to ask your doctor, right? Correct. You but, want to say, what do you take this? But the other risk is yeah, that your doctor that says, yes, I take this when you enroll in Medicare Advantage five years down the line when premiums that are paid by the government to Medicare Advantage providers Could- change, they may decide to no longer take that. And then you're, That's right. you're left looking for a new physician. So, you know, it, it's, it's about the freedom of choice versus minimizing costs. And you have to, have to be very careful in, in what you're willing to give up for what you're getting. Mm-hmm. There's no guarantee you're going to be able to continue to see those same doctors. If things change as far as Medicare renegotiation for rates paid to providers, that could impact the number of physicians mm-hmm. that are willing to accept Medicare Advantage. So there's a lot of, of drawbacks to going that route. Now, for certain individuals, it's still a good option. You know, like you said, Rich, if you're not somebody who gets sick very often, then, you know, it, it can be something that's good for you. But yep. uh, that's also to, not to say that, like you said, even when the waters are calm, that's not to say that there's not going to be some turbulence coming down the line. Just because you don't really get sick that often in your younger years, as you age, things are going to start to happen. You know, my, my father's a great example. Uh-huh. Never gets sick, went almost... 55 years without having any real major illness and then got hit with a number of, of significant health issues one after the other. Wow. It, it really caught him off guard. So, yeah, because he's know, had this track record. Right, yeah. Always been a healthy guy, you know, and, and, and never had problems needing to go to the doctor. And then, you know, one after another just kind of came in rapid succession. And it's, it's alarming, you know, and you kind of realize that maybe you don't have as good of health as you thought you did all along. Mm-hmm. That's true. Um, I will have some clients that when they go into Medicare Advantage... They'll do it when they first get into retirement. But I say you're just, you're gambling now. This is a roulette wheel. Mm -hmm. What if you're sick in a year? Right. Right. So now it's on two years. I have one client that was on Medicare Advantage for two years. And I said, listen, I said, you're pressing your luck. I said, you're healthy. You work out every day. I Mm -hmm. get it. But what if? She says, you're right. I'm not going to risk it anymore. See, the thing was, even though her spending and the plan was well done she was still nervous about her cash flows yeah so there's an emotional issue about nervousness about cash flow versus what the plan says and sometimes the medicare advantage breaches that to where the client until they feel like they got a handle on it they want to go into but they're playing russian roulette they are yeah you're That's rolling true. the dice yeah we're gonna talk about this when we get back Stay tuned. daily investment news you can use delivered at the speed of the internet at realinvestmentadvice.com in 1999 a parafiduciary group of financial advisors were busted by corporate giants for trying to operate in their clients best interest 
these men promptly escaped from a high cost margin environment to the Houston Energy Corridor. Today, still excoriated by their former employers, they survive as protectors of others' fortunes. If you have a problem about preserving capital, if no one else can help, and you can find them right here, maybe you should hire the RIA team. Small businesses are now being challenged by the lack of employees and how to attract and recruit the best employees. To get the better employee, you'll have to offer a better package. Hi, I'm Tom Allen, RIA Advisors Retirement Plan Consultant. Don't assume a 401k plan is too costly or complicated for your small business to offer. Let us show you how to make the most of an affordable and effective plan that will deliver true value for your business and your employees. Call me toll free at 855-RIA-PLAN or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. That's realinvestmentadvice.com. The Real Invest. Show. When it comes to wealth management, most people think of stocks and bonds, but it's like enjoying one layer in a seven layer cake. At RIA Advisors, we want to make sure you get your cake and eat it too. Social Security, Medicare, creating a tax friendly retirement paycheck, perhaps you're saving for college. How about life insurance? Guaranteed income solutions, all along with comprehensive planning. At RIA, a holistic approach to your money is our priority. Call us today, 855 RIA Plan, or find us online at Real Investment Advice. Com, realinvestmentadvice.com. And now, another page from the Real Investment Advisors Investing Manifesto. A passive investment portfolio requires active risk management. It's not a choice, it's necessity. Diversification doesn't protect against risk of loss. Let us actively help you reach your financial goals with RIA Advisors. Neither bull nor bear. RIA Advisors, 281-501-1791 or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. You're listening to The Real Investment Show. Welcome back. So someone said Medicare Advantage plans have to follow Medicare rules. If Medicare covers it, they have to do so as well. That's true to a point. Yes, they have to cover A, they have to cover B, and in some cases D. But there are certain treatments that they are going to mandate. I have a client that this just happened to that wasn't optimum or optimal for what she wanted. There was a much more effective treatment available that would have happened under Medigap that didn't happen under Medicare and Vantage. So keep in mind, we're not banging on Medicare Advantage plans. If you need to do that, do your homework. But understand, you might have to do your homework during enrollment period every year, right? You yep. should do that with Part D anyway during open enrollment. But I have clients that will diligently go through First of all, when they get something in the mail that say your plan has changed, which they can do at any time, people don't read it. Right. They don't read that, oh my gosh, this isn't covered anymore. Or, right. So, and I guess we're inundated with stuff. So it's up to you, and I have clients, again, who do this. They will investigate their Medicare Advantage plans and compare plans every year. It's just part of their homework. Understand the risks. Absolutely. Understand the risks. Yep. Right. And there are companies that people feel good about Medicare Advantage. Um, they like their coverage. They don't really want to go outside the loop. They don't have a dedicated doctor. They can afford the out of pocket if something happens. So I get why people do them. And since it's more privately owned and the margins are good, you're going to see more services that Medicare Advantage will provide. You're going to see them. There's even some talk about looking at some long-term care options, which is different than medical, right? But this, the most important part is don't get seduced by what I have, people that have gotten seduced by all the extra fun stuff they're going to get. And they don't do their homework. Or there are certain treatments for a heart disease or cancer that in the closed loop they cannot do. Yeah. So in some ways you are still rolling the dice, Compare Medigap versus Medi Medicare Advantage. What, I, what a client say have Medigap, they really like it because they don't pay for anything. They can go to any doctor they want. It reminds them of their open architecture of their employer plan. Right. Freedom of choice. Freedom of choice. Yeah. But you got to go by state by state and you have to do your homework. 
as long as you're doing your homework, then that's fine. But the, you know, this, the, the government really cracked down. You don't see as many Medicare Advantage ad or they don't promise so much as they did. Well, people didn't know they were calling because there was one ad that was said, call because you're missing out on something. And they really weren't missing out on anything. You know, it was misleading as A heck. free toaster. Yeah, yeah. free way. <laughs> oh, wow, can we get one of those? Um, so keep that in mind. <laughs> get a high quality sponge kitchen set for free. <laughs> that's funny, Swiss. Oh man, that's pretty funny. Yeah. Um, so just keep that in mind. But we generally will recommend for our clients to do Medigap, find a good Part D program, and it's very easy to search on Medicare.gov. Yeah. Um, the the plans if you travel especially if you travel out of the country so i had a so I had a tra- I had a client that was traveling out of state went to one state she had an emergency she has medicare advantage she had an emergency so i said oh my gosh i said i hope you're okay you know oh the doctor's covered so the doctor was covered in another state but guess wasn't what get you know what wasn't covered the hospital yep so they sent her a bill for $26,000 now she was able to negotiate that down to half. But she was like, ooh, that was still a big hit for me. Yeah, yeah. You know, because she came up. Or people, if you travel overseas or other, you know, you've got to look at the, 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 the letter grades of all the Medigap policies. Figure out what you like and see if you can get that covered in, say, a Medicare Advantage. So keep that... Um, in mind. Yes, they have to follow Medicare basic rules. But for the most part, there's a lot of judgment on specific treatments. I had a client that went yeah. through a heart treatment with Medicare Advantage, went with their program, didn't really want to do what they said versus a friend who was a doctor who said, well, if you know, if you would have had Medicare, Medigap, you could have come to me. Yeah, and and I could have, I could have given you, I would have given you a little bit more, something more effective. Yeah. And there's a difference so, between covering conditions and covering the same treatments. Correct. That's the key distinction That's that we're trying difference. to make here. Right? I'm not bashing Medicare Advantage Me either. neither. If it's yeah. right for you, it's right for you, but mm-hmm. just be aware of what you're getting versus what you're giving up. The most important part for us is that you know the risks. Yes. That's all. And you do your homework. You know, we're not going to say one is better for the other. We don't know your situation. Right. Um, there are times where I have suggested people do the Medicare Advantage because I think it would be, was right for them. But I know these people will do their homework every year. And if they have to change, they'll change. They don't have to worry about it. Yeah. And so just keep that in mind. I think we've really uh, exhausted that one. Yeah. <laughs> We're almost going into Medicare disadvantage <laughs> if we uh, keep this up. So we have now what we call reinvestment risk. Right? We already heard Mr. Powell say definitively that we were going to get three rate cuts, although I don't know what his magic eight ball is looking at versus mine. So we are going to see all these enjoyable rates that you like go sort of slowly fade away like the sands of an hourglass. Right? Absolutely. You or many people, especially older people that are risk averse, love these rates. Yeah. They have, you know, it's something we haven't seen in what, 12 years at least? Quite a while. Yeah. Now you're going to eventually lose these rates, whether it's on CDs. um, And CDs are really quick to change. What I've noticed when I go in, if a client wants to own, we can offer CDs. We we get CDs for every every bank. I have already noticed when the Fed made the announcement, they went under five for a year. Just like that. Yep. Right? So three months, obviously, can pay five and a half. Um, if you're going out two years, you're definitely going to be under five. And that was 5.5% last year, according to bank rate. Right? So there's nothing wrong with you using your short-term cash, maximizing. But even have clients that have online savings accounts and so forth, say, listen, lo- go out two years now. Lock it in. Lock it in. Yeah. I have clients, we've locked in five-year treasuries right? Seven years. Because even though the rates are like 4.2, 4.3, whatever it is, I'm like, listen, we're eventually going to lose these. Yeah. And this is what Lance and Michael have been talking about. We cannot sustain these rates. So you're going to lose these short-term, intermediate-term rates. And even long-term rates are going to start to come down. 
just because we can't handle it, right? The debt service and so forth. Let's not frighten everybody. Um, <laughs> but let's just say the wheels are coming off the plane and the bus and the car, everything. And you have to now start saying some of your fixed income money, you need to start looking, get away from looking at getting seduced by the yield and start looking at where the yield curve is going to go and maybe start locking up some money longer term. Yeah, and that's the key, Rich. You know, it, 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 for the last few years where rates have been, clients have been associating their money, their cash savings as fixed income. And, you know, while it's worked well for the last few years while rates are high, mm -hmm. you know, that's not typically what we would consider fixed income. And I've right. got clients who are like, well, I, I don't want to look into bonds because right now I'm getting much more in, in my money market. And so it's, it's a better it's a better return. And, you know, Danny and I talked about this last time I was on the show that, yes, that's correct. But those money market yields are going to change overnight as soon as the Fed changes the rate. You know, what's funny is when the Fed was increasing rates and we were talking about this years ago when I first started in the business. Yeah. When the, when the Fed raised rates, the banks raised rates immediately. Yeah. So people thought that it was automatic. Look what happened here. Fed raised rates and banks were very slow to move. Very at hesitant. All. Yeah. But to your point, on the way down. It's overnight. Oh, they're going fast. <laughs> They'll pull the rug. They'll pull <laughs> the rug. So you're going to get, now, albeit slowly, this rug is going to be pulled. And actually, that's good for you because at least you know the rug's being pulled out from under you. You have to start making changes now. So let me ask you a question, Jonathan. I have a CD that's going to come due. It's five and a quarter. It's going to come due on Monday. And I don't need really the money for anything in the short term. What, what, what should I look to do as opposed to going out six months? Should I look to go out longer or? Yeah, I would absolutely look longer, you know, further out down the curve. And this is, again, something we touched on last time I was here with Danny. But it now is kind of a unique inflection point in interest rates where extending out the duration or the maturity of your fixed income holdings is going to have an outsized impact when we start to see rates coming down on the longer mm -hmm. end of the curve. You know, the, the impact of the duration of your holdings is going to act as a lever on the capital appreciation you would gain for things like bonds. You know, and now it's not going to be appropriate if you're investing in CDs because there's no really, unless it's a brokered CD, there's really no pricing mechanism since those are held with a bank directly. Uh, but if you're holding something like a treasury bond that can be sold at any point, you're going to see capital appreciation benefits by going a little bit further out down the yield curve. Right. Right. So even before this, Danny and I would always recommend why do you have a brick and mortar bank for your savings? Right. Ally Bank, Synchrony, Marcus, we don't work for them. We don't get paid by them. These rates are still going to be higher when rates come down. Yeah. So say the Fed's done. Say the last couple of years, next two years, they, they cut six times. Their rates are going to fall as well. But Not nowhere near what your brick and mortar bank yep. is going to do. So Absolutely. always look at those online banks. Well, that's all we got for today. <clears throat> We appreciate you listening. Boy, that YouTube chat is a rowdy. You guys are <laughs> as rowdy as Reddit. <laughs> but we appreciate you. Have a great weekend. Thanks, guys. We'll see you Monday.